Reckon there's this really fantastic moment that happens um, when you come to a camp like this or, or any, any big event and it happens, you get a little glimpse of it as you start to pull out of your driveway and then it doesn't really hit like kind of in full force till you may be a good 15 minutes from your house and then there's this kind of this great but slow acceptance that anything you've forgotten, it's just too late to turn around and go back now. You know that point in your trip where you just kind of resign yourself to the fact that even if you've forgotten something off the list, it's kind of like, oh, I'm more than halfway there. No one else enjoys that part? No? Thank you, Phil. <laughs> I enjoy it. Because it's this little bit of just letting go and just going, you know what, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. That, and it is rough, isn't it, preparing for camp? Do you guys get like a big list? I think I probably got a big list of what I was meant to bring. Did you get a list of what you were meant to bring? And there's so much to prepare, isn't there? Like what if it's going to be hot? What if it's going to be cold? What if every girl in my cabin brought the same dress as me for formal night? What do I need for snacks? I'm meant to bring an instrument, probably need an esky. Like, all the things that you have to think of and bring, and it can be pretty stressful trying to get it all. And, and you know, last night I didn't anticipate being at the formal night because um, I thought I would be kind of caught up with my kids and not serving. So I didn't anticipate being there, but just before I left home, I thought maybe I should just duck in and, like, grab my pretty dress. You know, just in case. And um, I didn't because it would have been like just one more, like the sixth or seventh trip back inside for just one more thing, Nate. Just one more thing. And um, I thought, you know what, I don't want to test the boundaries of his patience because he's a good man and I want to stay together. So um, despite this niggling feeling of maybe I should run in, um, I didn't. And I got to the former last night and I just thought, at these spiffy dudes they looked great they looked really great and and I didn't feel ready and I'm looking at all these girls and and I didn't feel ready at all and um I don't know if you've ever if I've if I've ever I don't know if you've ever done it you guys don't seem too concerned but I don't know if I've ever attended like a camp or something away from home where I've felt fully confident that I haven't forgotten a thing fully confident that I'm ready for everything that's going to happen that week um, I reckon I live a good part of my week and actually like a massive part of my life in, in just a state of unreadiness. Not ready for work. <laughs> Struggling to get everything I need together. Not ready for meetings. Dinners not ready. Um, assignments never ready. Um, you know, I, I, went on a missions, I went on a missions team to Zambia and I... I was the only leader on the team and took like a dozen teenage girls on a dirt bike team to ride motorbikes around Africa, building cool stuff. You can see me, can't you, as a motorbike riding builder? Yeah. A little bit of mocking from the front row, but hey. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I had this incredible sense as I was going, I'm not ready for this. I've never ridden a motorbike. And I've built some stuff, but I've never been like a building supervisor. This is crazy. I'm not ready for this. I wasn't ready to have kids, especially those kids. They're like energy-sapping creature things. They're so, so, so fun and they're so cool and, and they're normally a little bit less psycho than you've all witnessed today. And I wasn't ready for that. I feel like I'm never ready when someone comes up and taps me on the shoulder and goes, hey, would you go pray? for that girl who's just created a puddle of tears on the floor and has issues that you've got no idea about and you're just going to step in there as some stranger and, and go and offer a word of comfort? Like, what? Have you ever been in that position? Did you feel ready? Man, I feel like I live so much of my life in a state of unreadiness. But I figure, even if you're not with me tonight, which by kind of your blank stares, I can tell quite a few of you are not with me, and we'll see if you get there soon. I figure I'm in good company anyway, because the Bible is full of unready people. 
There's these 10 virgins that are totally without oil in Matthew chapter 25, stinking not ready in a bad way. There's those who miss the wedding banquet in Matthew 22, not ready. And there's that day that like pretty much the entire crowd stupidly forgot their lunch and Jesus had to cater, unready. Maybe you don't feel ready to perform tomorrow. Maybe you don't feel ready to go home tomorrow. Maybe you don't feel ready to face some of the issues you've left behind. And the theme of this camp is equip. Equip. Equipping you, giving you the tools, giving you the resources, helping to prepare you, helping you to be ready for ministry well beyond this week. Helping you to do well the things that God calls you to do. Equipping you to do that. Having you be ready. And maybe you don't sense you're fully equipped yet. Maybe there's someone here that's with me that feels unready. And I want to let you know tonight, you may be unready, but God is ready. Jeremiah, chapter 1. Who's got their Bibles here? Open it up. Get it out. Old Testament style. Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 4 says this. Okay, even though I'm going to start reading it before you've looked it up, just look it up anyway. Check that I haven't given you something bogus. The call of Jeremiah, verse 4, The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said. I do not know how to speak. I'm only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. How cool is that? Jeremiah says some stuff other than 29.11. Uh-huh. It's decent. You should check it out. Jeremiah was a reluctant messenger. If you read the book of Jeremiah, you see pretty quickly that he felt frightened and insecure. He was freaked out most of the time, but he burned with a message. He didn't feel ready like I usually don't. But this is how ready God is. Before you were born, I set you apart. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Talk about preparation. God's really into the details. He's prepped. He just doesn't always feel the need to tell you all the details. And maybe you've got a dream for your school. Maybe God has called you to do something this week that's for next week. And you can't see all the details yet. And that's causing you a bit of grief. I want to let you know God has it worked out. He's got it worked out. This calling he's given you, this idea, this big idea, this dream, this passion you have, it's not surprising him. It's not like when Jeremiah says here in verse 6, uh, Sovereign Lord, you know, I'm being respectful and all, Sovereign Lord, but don't know if you've noticed, I don't know how to speak, I'm only a child. And then we carry on with verse 7, Darn it, you're right. What was I thinking? Calling a kid. That's whack. I'm going to go get someone else. God doesn't freak out. There are some rides at, at Luna Park that you have to be a certain height to go on. <laughs> some of you maybe haven't ridden those yet. There, there are some jobs that, that you have to have a certain amount of years of experience to even be allowed to go in and apply for it. But there are no height and age restrictions to God's call. God has never shied away from using kids because he's ready. He's prepped, he's planned, he's seen how it should be, he's seen how it's going to be. He is so ready that he can use anybody and he wants to use you. He doesn't need you to feel ready. Because often if you feel really, really ready to tackle something, probably means you're just going to muck it up doesn't need us to feel ready because he's ready. God can use you. God will use you. He will equip you. You know, I do have this cool kid called Leonard and, he, and he's two. And, and because I like him, like God likes us, 
I've never asked Leonard to do something that I don't prepare him for as we go. All he has to do is listen to me. At two years old, all I require of him is that he just listen to me and do the simple task of like getting out of bed and standing there and letting me get him ready. And, and I clothe him each day and I, I pack his little bag if we're going somewhere and I feed him, but I do it all just as it's needed, just in time. Some people want God to feed them now for the next three years of his plan, and it's crazy. I don't give Leonard his money for the church offering on Tuesday. He'd lose it, he'd feed it to his sister, he'd plant it in the garden. It would not go to God. I give it to him on Sunday morning and he loves putting it in the plate. I give it to him when he needs it. I help him get ready as he goes. If you wait until you feel fully equipped, guys, you're going to miss the boat because you can spend your entire life getting ready. And some of the cabin leaders that were waiting on you last night are like, "Mm mm-hmm, preacher Chandri. If I waited till this sermon was absolutely perfect, you'd never get preached at. Step out and allow God to use you. Allow him to equip you along the way. Here's the great thing, the great truth that we get from Jeremiah. You don't need to be ready if you're following someone who is. Your own head's going to tell you a bunch of the time that, that you're not ready. Satan wants to convince you that you're not ready and there's plenty of people in this world that are going to tell you that you're not ready. You're not trained enough, you're not old enough, you're not whatever enough. You've heard the messages. You need to go back and tell them, you're right, I'm not ready. God is. He doesn't call us to feel ready for the task, guys. He calls us to follow him. You don't need to feel ready if you're following the right guide. He's equipping you as he goes to just stay behind the guide. If the Lord is truly a shepherd, would you just act like a sheep? And just go with it and just follow. Usually, for me, there's nothing more irritating than when I'm trying to get ready for something and I feel like I'm falling behind in the task and someone else comes up and goes, you know what? I'm ready, I'm ready to go. Like this is Nathaniel who only has to like put on clothes that always fit and always look perfect and like brush his teeth and then he's like, I'm ready to go and I'm like, "Mm mm-hmm, yeah, and I'm there like packing for three and, you know, stuff like this and um, and I'm not ready and and someone's saying, I am ready and it annoys the bejeepers out of me but this is the one time it's an incredible comfort is that the more I say, but I'm not ready, I'm not ready for that task, God. I'm not ready to assume that ministry. I'm not ready to lead. The more I do that, the more God says to me, but I'm ready. I'm ready. And it's the one time it's a comfort is to know that God is already there in next week. God is in next month. He's in the jobs that he's asked me to do. He's in the jobs he's going to ask me to do. He's already there and he's already ready. And I just want to leave you with a little something that I didn't tell Matt about. Um, But... (laughs) Guys, you can't follow him. You can't walk behind him and trust that he's going to get you ready if you don't know what he sounds like. I I was sitting there um, in the dining room this morning watching Leonard kind of head towards me and, and maybe 10 other people had tried to talk to this kid along the way and been like, hey, Leonard, come over here. Leonard, come over here. And he was just like... Uh, totally dissed them all and I'm sure they felt just a little bit broken hearted but what he had heard just before this was his mum say hey buddy you've got to come over here and he knew my voice he didn't know all these other voices I mean you all sound really really cute but you're not his mum and that kid knows my voice and he can pick me out in a crowd I tell you We can bring him down here and and you can all stand up and he won't see me, but I start talking and he will make his way to me because he knows my voice. And guys, we need to know God's voice. You need to know God's voice if you're going to follow him. You don't need to be ready because God's ready. And it doesn't matter if you feel ready if you're following the guy who is, but you're not going to follow him if you don't know what he sounds like. And you've heard a lot of preaching this week and it's really easy 
to hear Greg's voice and Jared's voice and my voice and Nate's voice and Mark and all these voices, you need to go home and practice hearing God's voice because nothing in this world tops knowing how to hear his voice for yourself. Don't take our words. Go home and ask God for his word to you. Ask for a personal revelation and you be patient until you know what his voice sounds like and you stick it out and you sit through the silence and you suffer through the silence until you get to know what he sounds like and then you follow him, follow him, whether you feel ready or not. 